We have huge news this weekend as Lamborghini have announced their intentions to split from Williams at the season's end. Although they won a miracle race last time out, they have had overall a miserable season with no signs of improvement. Lamborghini say they will remain in F1 as they have apparently agreed to buy out another team going into next year. How about that? We kick off Circuit of the Americas weekend here with some huge news that Williams and Lamborghini are already splitting after just one season and no results. However, Lamborghini announces that they are still remaining in Formula One going into next season as they have already gone through with a deal to buy out another team that has not been named yet. So I'm very curious to see who that's going to be. So Williams, what's their plan? Do they go back to, you know, the old Williams or kind of, uh, you know, family team name, just Williams Racing, or are they going to seek out another partner going into next season? It'd be kind of late for that to happen, but this is not the first time this season already that we have seen uh, a kind of a development split after, you know, before a whole season, because as well, keep in mind, Andretti uh, is splitting from Cadillac after just one season and will now be partnered with BMW going into the final season of this F123 career mode. So some big news on the horizons. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen there as we roll through into qualifying. Last episode, unbelievably frustrating in the quest for our first championship. We've had a heck of a season. Six wins, but another mechanical failure puts us almost 50 points behind the championship leader, Aiden Jackson, coming into Circuit of the Americas here. And, well, quite simply, we have to be Aiden Jackson today. Felipe Drogovic, Goes top of the board in Q1 here. Both of the Williams Lamborghinis at the bottom of the grid now. As that team really feels like it's a, a lost cause at this point now. Going into the tail end of Season 6 here. Q2 uh, looking for uh, just a decent pace. You know, the car felt pretty good, pretty comfortable. It seemed like this Red Bull Ford was quite quick around this circuit this weekend. Uh, Dragovic was really good in practice and he was showing that same pace in qualifying. It didn't quite show it in Q2, but I did. I put the car P3 behind the pair of McLaren's 1-2 for Jackson Albon, but Jamie Chadwick doing Yuri Vips, Marino Sato, as well as Liam Lawson all out in Q2, setting us up for that third and final qualifying session here. I look at this as a must-beat Aiden Jackson kind of day, obviously. Only a handful of Grand Prix left in the season. My first lap put us P2, Norris Pohl, Drogovic third, Albon fourth, and nowhere to be seen in the top five was Aiden Jackson, who was well outside of that top five, as now we come through into making our late lap here, our final chance to get a quicker lap in, in Q3, and we had already found three to four tenths of a second gain. We need about five to five and a half tenths of a gain to get pole position. And we found exactly that, and then some. We find six tenths of a second gain, while Charles Leclerc actually just crossed the line and went P2, relegating us down to P3, but six tenths gain, but it's gone. We invalidate the lap time, unfortunate there, but that's gonna keep us in P3. This would have been good enough for a pole position, but I'm still confident in a good potential start here to put us up front into turn one. Aiden Jackson down in eighth, the Ferrari pair of drivers right there of Hamilton, Cali Mare, uh, ninth and 10th, uh, as you can see, Piastri there, six. But let's get ready to go racing in Circuit of the Americas. Well, you don't need me to remind you that Formula One is now so beloved in the United States that we race here three times a year. But let's give respect to Cota or the Circuit of the Americas to give it its full name. This place laid the foundations for this moment and still remains the host of the US Grand Prix. It's the Circuit of the Americas then, situated 14 miles outside of the great city of Austin. This is a 3.6 mile lap with 20 corners, 10 to the left and 10 to the right, and top speeds of around 200 miles per hour. Overtaking opportunities are available into turns one and 12, especially with that rear wing DRS wide open. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Golden Boy, Drogovic, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Jackson, Hamilton, Mayer, Chadwick, Dewan, Yuri Vips, Sato, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Ocon, Gasly, Vesti, and Joe Guan Yu. 
which of these talented drivers will come out on top today. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's talk about Golden Boy. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances. But what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another good race today. We have a really interesting race on the way. Rain is uh, forecasted right there for only one slot. So we're sticking with the softs to mediums and I'm really not quite sure how this is going to play out. Is it going to rain or not? It's only one way to find out. Let's get ready to roll. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. Everybody on sauce except for three drivers, Piastri, Chadwick, as well as Marino Sato. So as all the cars reform the grid, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers, ensuring the planned strategies are all in place. All right, boys, uh, it's what, five races left. Uh, no excuses anymore. Can't have any more mechanical failures. Yep, I agree, and hopefully Ford does as well. We line up to the grid right behind pole winner Lando Norris and we're seeing a lot of uh, diversity up here it's not the Red Bull McLaren kind of you know uh, front row kind of dominance it's you know Tricos is up here Mercedes is up here as well so nice to see a little bit of a, a a difference in parity up towards the front of the grid here 28 laps of racing the final U.S. Grand Prix of the season it's at Circuit of the Americas where it lights out and we're racing it's a poor start for Drogovic behind us and a Poor start for Norris in front. We'll slip through wheel to wheel with Charles Leclerc on the run towards turn one. He's able to bring me into that first corner there. Norris peeking up the inside. Not going to be enough there. That was just my actually. Uh, so basically, I did um, the NASCAR iRacing event here uh, on Circuit of the Americas earlier in the week, a few days before I had recorded this episode. So I had the kind of breaking zones in my mind from NASCAR. So I broke way too early uh, going into turn number one but fortunately it works itself out here now as you can see everyone getting sorted out behind Hamilton right there Cali Mara as well not a great start for Cali Mara she's got the Lotus of Yuri Vips now in front of her Hamilton in his final United States Grand Prix of his Formula One career we know he retires at the end of the season and still no announcement, no word on who's going into that seat. We still don't know anybody going to Ferrari next season. It's it's pretty well guaranteed that Callie Mare is going to Ferrari, but she's had her struggles. She's definitely not had the most consistent drive with Ferrari so far, so there's definitely maybe the potential for it to not quite work out, but I do think she will be there next season. As we come to the start now of lap two, uh, settling in behind Leclerc and the Trackhouse machine. Leclerc has one win with Trackhouse in his career so far, looking for two today. Now, starting lap two, there was actually some trouble behind us, and it actually had to do with Cali Mare, and you're going to see on board here in just a second, but she actually ran into the back of the Lotus in front of her, Yuri Vips. Here you go, on board with Mare on the run towards turn one, runs right into the back of him, and actually damages the front wing. Very light contact, but it would damage her wing, and you're going to notice on the track map, uh, she is going to start holding up some traffic behind her, and of course, lose some ground to the cars in front here. As we just try to settle in, wondering, is it going to rain you see the overcast sky there was one slot on the forecast of slight rain or light rain keep in mind though it's approximate it's not guaranteed so it very well might not rain it could end up being heavy rain for multiple uh, time slots we don't really know quite yet uh, but settling in here in p2 coming to lap five at this point and about one second ahead of lando norris uh, albon fourth jackson's climbed up to p5 while drogovic down there in p6 George Russell currently in P7. It's a seven car breakaway. We can't quite get away from each other. Everybody in this top seven right now has virtually uh, the same pace right now. And you can see that with the DRS assistance, we're starting to put a little bit more pressure on Leclerc as these laps go on. And now we were right to the back of him, but he would find just ways throughout the lap to kind of open up the gap again. And then I would use the DRS straight away to get back to him. And then he would open it up all over again, especially in the S's. I was finding that Leclerc was really strong 
strong in that first sector. And you can you can make a lot of time in sector one through that S section, or you can lose a lot of time. And actually, that's what happened behind us. So I don't know what was going on, but Lando Norris was kind of banking up the pace. Uh, and myself and Leclerc would drive away. Three seconds on Norris. Albon, three and a half back. Jackson, 4.2 back. So now it's a two-car breakaway. Uh, and now look at the run that we have on Charles Leclerc here in that track house machine. We'll swing to the right side now. He goes defensive on the left side. Wheel to wheel, axle to axle, as he has the edge on us on the exit but we have the grip and the power we power through and we'll take the lead here in circuit of the americas now looking for win number seven on the season would be quite heartbreaking if we had seven wins on the season and, and no championship to show for it as of right now though it remains at six uh, alongside aiden jackson who's had one heck of a season but now has gone a few races without a win after going three consecutive race wins in a row but i thought once i cleared charlotte leclerc i was going to be able to drive away however that was the complete opposite of the expectation. That was the only corner right there where I was really able to get away from him. But watch this. I mean, you're, you're seeing coming to lap 12, Leclerc is staying with me. But not only is he staying with me, but the cars third on back are closing. So I'm just quite literally not the quickest leader right now. I mean, it, there's not enough pace in the car to drive away. And there's not enough pace to, uh, you know, limit the third car, third place cars on back from getting to us. So coming to the end of lap 12, we're coming in for a scheduled pit stop here. We're going to put on the mediums. There was no sign of rain at this point here as we enter the pits. All right, so there's no rain coming? No rain. It will miss us. You get that right there from Mark. No rain. It is going to miss the circuit. So uh, we can focus in now on a you know remainder of a dry race and get back into the flow of things and, and fight it out. But uh, fight it out, I say. But I mean, I, I was already giving it everything I had and I just couldn't drive away. So I'm curious to see how this is going to work itself out. We'll exit the pit lane in front of Leclerc, in front of Alex Albon as well in the run towards turn one. Fortunately, uh, no immediate traffic to worry about. Jamie Chadwick nearly five seconds up the road. That gap is going to come down quite significantly. Uh, but over the course of this outlap, getting the tires warmed back up, uh, Leclerc right on the back of me, putting some pressure on. Albon's only one second behind, so he's really been able to close the gap. Everybody's coming into the pit lane, but look how close Leclerc is to me on the run down towards turn number one. Uh, so we'll, we'll be the net leader still, but I mean, we're going to be under a whole lot more pressure compared to where we were when we actually came into the pit lane now. Right to the back here of Jamie Chadwick as we come towards the end of lap 14. Oscar Piastri leading the way, but he's just now pitting along with Chadwick, who's going to come in in that Connor Sport McLaren. Uh, expectation is Jamie Chadwick if Cali Mara gets the Ferrari seat for next season. Jamie Chadwick will also be uh, full-time in that Connor Sport car. She's done a very solid job. She hasn't quite had, you know, the pace that we usually see out of, like, Cali Mara in that car, but she's had a very consistent pace and has been able to keep that car, you know, on the road without any incidents, which we've seen Cali Mara be prone to a few incidents here and there so far, especially this season. But now things have cycled through, but we're still under immense pressure from Leclerc here on the run down towards turn one, lap 18 actually going deep into turn one. Leclerc up the inside. Fortunately, we have that kind of more straight line exit there going wide and we can really power up uh, and stay ahead. But I mean, Albon within a second. Norris not far behind. Dragovic now up to fifth. He's past Aiden Jackson. So he is up here in the mix suddenly. We know Dragovic has had speed all weekend, but you can see myself coming to lap 19, missing the apex there of that penultimate corner through that final left-hander, that 90 degree left turn down the front straightaway. Leclerc is right here ready for the pouncing on position number one. We're going to continue to try to break that slipstream, but it's not going to be enough. Leclerc up the inside into turn one. He clears me and unexpectedly there, Albon's going to dive one up the inside. Fortunately, we avoid contact, but I had to check up a little bit more than I wanted because Leclerc kind of got the lead, really planted it on the apex and backed me up to Albon uh, as I think he was trying to do exactly that, get me down to maybe third place, but fortunately we're able to stay ahead and hopefully as well we can maybe fight back. I don't want to just ride here in second place but we know this is going to be a hard one to win today but here we go again down the DRS straight away to the right side of Charles Leclerc now into the left hander we made the same move earlier for the lead we're going to do it again we power right on past Leclerc back into the lead of the United States Grand Prix here from Circuit of the Americas it's like no one can get away from each other here you hear Charles Leclerc's radio but with nine laps to go we're going to go through the grid it's a, a race-long battle between Owen and Leclerc.
but just behind them is five more cars ready to pounce on a chance to win. Uh, we have seven cars here in the mix to win this race. We haven't seen this all year long. And I really don't know why they have all got similar pace today. It's a shame that Ferrari haven't quite had the pace to contend. And speaking of Ferrari, Ted Kravitz has an update to share on their injured driver, Max Verstappen. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to share some word around the paddock this weekend. Uh, it sounds like Verstappen could be back in the car for the final three rounds of the season before he walks away from Formula One at the end of the year. Um, a lot of questions we still need answers to, like who, who will drive for Ferrari next year? As well as the most recent news, what team has Lamborghini bought out going into next year? My money is on a team that we have seen make big gains recently. All right, thanks, Ted. Um, so many questions with just a few rounds to go in the season. Uh, I do believe it will be Mayer in the Ferrari seat, along with maybe a surprise driver beside her, um, maybe a, a Pierre Gasly or a Yuri Vips even. Um, don't rule out, and rule out a McLaren change either. There's been some tension there recently. And there you see Sunoda, Fed, Frederick Vesti, and Kelly Mayer at the bottom of the grid. So Mayer uh, did get a wing replacement. It's just she lost so much time uh, that she's trying to, of course, rebound and make that up. But definitely not a great day for the Ferrari driver here. Now Max Verstappen as well. Uh, likely going to see him back in the car uh, to finish out the season uh, very, very soon. So we'll have to wait and see what's happening there. Is actually get a warning for exceeding track limits. And our gap had briefly reached about one second but i couldn't quite get it to go further especially when i went over the track limits there having to back out of it a little bit uh and that allowed leclerc back, kind of back into that drs zone uh so unfortunately it was kind of like a, an opportunity to get out of the drs and i fumbled the ball a little bit here now as you can see that leclerc putting a lot more pressure on us again with just five laps to go here in Circuit of the Americas, it's Leclerc, Albon, Norris, Drogovic chasing, and uh, as well, I mean, a, a good day for Mercedes here. Uh, Russell is right at the back of this train as Jackson's down in P6, which is absolutely fantastic for us. That's what we need. If we can win this race, we'll gain a good chunk of points. Even if we finish second or third, we're going to still gain something, uh, but obviously going for the race victory here. Now coming through the final turn, approaching three laps to go in Coda. Can we hang on as Leclerc with the DRS to front straight away in that long back straight away of course the most vulnerable points of this racetrack for us if we can hang on through just those two straightaways it, it's very difficult to pass here in Coda so uh, it makes it a lot easier for me when leading the races it's honestly as we come to two to go similar to Monaco uh, where you just have to kind of cover uh, for two straightaways and you can hang on for the rest of the circuit here now but we exit that final turn two laps to go Leclerc within half a second of us now as we have now Drogovic passing Norris as you're going to see myself make a bit of a mistake right there on the exit of the sector one S's and here comes Charles Leclerc now towards the hand left hander he's not going to go for the overtake which is actually not what I wanted to see because now he's going to be right on the back of us he was going to have DRS either way as now we head down this long bank straight away can we stay ahead going left going right trying to break that slipstream but now just staying to the right here goes Leclerc up the inside on the run towards the breaking zone and the third time that him and I have gone side by side through here once again we remain wheel to wheel into the right hander nearly clear but not enough Leclerc is going to hang it around the outside as we continue wheel to wheel with a lap and a half of racing here from Circuit of the Americas Leclerc gets us and he shuts the door he swipes across our nose to stay ahead he goes back to the left side but I I can't quite get alongside him through the long sweeping carousel and Charles Leclerc coming to the final lap here in Circuit of the Americas and it's going to be a tough order to get back out in front here now because the AI they can absolutely dominate in battery usage there's also a yellow flag in sector one one of the BMWs are slow as we had a bit of a tank slap right there to start the final lap Albon now putting pressure he's going to go to the right side Ocon in the BMW a mechanical failure starting the final lap here from Circuit of the Americas we stay ahead of Albon drug fourth Norris fifth Jackson down in P6 down the long bank straight away it's all about what can we do but the answer is not enough Leclerc is going to stay ahead on the way towards the braking zone we don't even get close enough to even make him consider defending he had so much battery to burn through as we come towards the end of the second sector is there anything we can do well the answer is probably not as we continue on and it, sure enough Leclerc is just able to manage the gap through the penultimate turn towards the final turn here in Coda it's all Leclerc for the second time with Trackhouse Racing. He is going to pick up the victory here in Coda. Yes! Let's go! Come on! Yes! And that's a podium!
And you hear the delight in Leclerc's voice now as we end up runner-up P2. We still gain points. Drogovic will earn driver of the day. That was brilliant stuff from Aston Martin today. What a superb victory. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. It's Leclerc in track house back on top here in Coda. Love to see it. Leclerc has had such a rough go here in the F1 23 driver career mode. That's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, things really just never worked out. We watched his downfall at Ferrari uh, and as well, uh, you know, we saw him go to this track house team, this new team a few seasons ago, uh, and they started out solid getting a podium right off the bat but then it just never really worked out from that point on uh, but we've now seen him pick up a couple of victories to this point which is awesome to see can Trancos find something going into this final season that can kind of propel them from a team that can win a race or two per season to an actual championship threat I think that's the big question honestly it might be time for them to move on from Oscar Piastri I have to to say it you know Piastri is still yet to win a Grand Prix in this career mode and he's had a lot of inconsistencies but Trankhouse has backed him uh, all the way to this point uh, as you can see the rest of the finishing and now point standings we're 34 points behind Aiden Jackson with what four Grand Prix remaining I believe so a lot of work still to be done, uh, but you know, one more day like this, even the second place in a Jackson P6, we're right back in it. We are five points ahead of McLaren going into the next round. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Have yourselves a great day.